Hey folks, Phil B-Man here. I'm standing between two extracting lines, which is my new setup. This is my old 60 frame Cowan, and I have moved it that way and also slightly this way. And this is my new used Cowan 60 uh, that I bought uh, I think the end of November, December sometime. And I've gradually been putting it together and getting her lined up. And I think I have here a setup that I'm happy with. So I've taken this control was over here. Both of these were essentially, I guess you'd call them right hand systems where the, you know, if you're looking at the machine, the capper is at the right end and everything moves from down there. So I, I want to be able to do this with a single operator in between. So I'm moving the controls over here. That also meant I had to move the uh, drive for the auger. Maybe I'll just get you a better view of that. So this drive motor for the uh, conveyor chains needed to be relocated from that side to this side. Pretty simple job, really. The uh, popped the shaft out, flipped it over, put it back in. One, literally one retaining clip was all that took. A little bit of grease and a little bit of patience to do it carefully. Same with this drive uh, that would have been had the sprocket on this side before. And again, one retaining clip here, pulled that drive out put it in and it makes sense because Cowan makes these for your choice to have either right hand or left hand. So it makes sense that for the most part, it would be interchangeable parts. Uh, I'm impressed with how easily that went. A Little bit of welding involved in putting this bracket. And in fact, to break it off the other side, we did have to do more grinding and pounding than maybe we should have. Um, Maybe a portable plasma cutter would have been sweet or something. But anyway, we we got it done. Most of this, the most of the quality welding is done by my neighbor, who is an excellent, excellent, excellent welder. Uh, the one part that doesn't seem to be interchangeable is the shield that would have been here on the other side. So we're going to have to either highly modify or change it. The guard that was here does fit nicely there. Also going to have to transfer over these controls here. They'll have to be remounted on the other side. A little bit of wiring involved there. Nothing about that scares me too much. And, uh, and the control lever for the um, for the the loader ram also had to be swapped over and that involved a little bit of welding and grinding. But uh, that was not terrible. We also did the hood on the extractor itself. So we took these, uh, the, hit, the lid we just flipped around, but the mounts for the hinges and the uh, rams needed to be, we ground them off the other side and rewelded them on here. And now we have what I think is a right-handed instead of a left-handed extractor. My goal here is that I have, I'm not looking to like double my capacity. I'm looking to, uh, let's say 30%, 25% more. So really, I'm not, I'm planning to have a single operator on the uncappers, one there, oop, where, which way am I going here, one there. And when those things are working right, really you have, you can probably keep both full at one time. And then a single operator in the middle, and then it's probably gonna be a pile of work to have only a single unloader we might need to 
to amp that up a little bit. So maybe we're adding one more person to this show. So instead of a three person operation, it'll be a four. Um, with three people, I had a fair bit of idle time. Uh, my employees had lots of time to check their phones and keep their hands washed and things. Because uh, really the 60 frame is meant to be a two person operation. I, I was always was just more comfortable with three because that gives you uh, just a little bit of, of ease. So now it's going from, I don't know if three is gonna be enough to keep the same pace. We'll probably try it and see how it goes. It'll be, depend a bit on the, you get a really ambitious unloader, they can keep up quite easily. If you got a person who's uh, just learning about work, then uh, they might need, you don't want them to be so far behind that it's just discouraging and they hate it. So there'll be some balance to achieve there. Uh, I'm planning to keep my heat exchanger the same, but I am planning to have two honey pumps, one under each extractor, and uh, they will probably operate kind of staggered to each other uh, as each one fills. So that's the update on the extracting line. I don't know how much more I can show you about that. Uh, nothing's bolted down yet, in fact, now that I've got everything lined up, uh, I had the uh, electrician here because all of my power comes off of the roof. And my old extractor, I kind of have uh, power drops for every, uh, every system. And I installed a couple extra. Oh, there's the extra one right there and uh, I originally had foreseen upgrading of one day to a 120 that's uh, now probably not the case so I installed one extra circuit there to power the unloading portion of a Cowan 120 which which needs some amps for the unloading motors uh, we'll now use that extra ceiling mounted um, unit for the extra steamer, because we'll have a, two extractors and need two steamers. And then uh, when I was building the shop, I, uh, uh, one real heavy line that was the power supply for this extractor in the old shop, and I tore it off and that was about as far as it came from the electrical panel. So that's where we put it. So I have enough amps there to run the new extractor, including the, the actual extractor, the conveyor auger, the, uh, the, well, the conveyor and the auger and the honey pump concurrently off of that, uh, that line. So it's, it's too, it's basically a you know a heavy 10 gauge wire, so uh, so phew that I don't have to tear a bunch of walls apart to get more power here. Um, my and uh, a little bit of forethought, a little bit of extra uh, wire when we were building pays off, you know, almost 10 years later. So that's an update on the extractor. I haven't run it yet, so stay tuned for what it's all going to do. The next step is I'm going to move all this out of here, and I'm going to have this half of the floor epoxy coated, uh, especially since I, you know, I had to grind some floor. I think it's a nice time to, to clean it all up, get it spit and polished, and then get a nice epoxy coating. I don't know I don't think I'm gonna be have my my lines visible again so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure out kind of approximately where these things sit so I only got to mark you know roughly the area in which I'm putting these before I put them down and screw them down so this is kind of January's job is to get all this finalized and then it's on to uh, bigger and better things going forward. 
Thanks a lot, everyone. Have a great day.